This is Dwayne at RealFixesRealFast.com. Just like the song, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, a mass airflow can be good, bad, and ugly. In other words, if it's good, you've got a good signal and everything's working right. If it's bad, there's no signal, or it drops out, or it's erratic. Or it can be ugly, it can be dirty, or it could just not be a normal signal. We're not sure what's wrong with it, but it doesn't look right. So we've got to test it. So we're going to spend most of our testing time and explaining time talking about the ugly. Now we happen to be working on a 2003 Chevy Blazer with a 4.3 engine. Now there's basically two types of mass airflow sensors out there. One is called a vane airflow type, but probably the most common is the hot wire type. And that's what we've got. So of course it's always good to understand how this works first before we go looking at how to test it. Now in the mass airflow connector you're going to have three wires. One is going to be a ground, the other one is going to be 12 volts coming from the battery, and the other one is going to be the signal wire. Now keep in mind here the ground should be ground. The battery generates the 12 volts, so the 12 volt wire should be coming from the battery. The mass airflow is a frequency generator. It is going to generate a signal and that is going to be sent out on the signal wire. Now we're talking about a hot wire sensor, but there's actually two wires inside the mass airflow sensor. One is hot, the other one is cold. Now the cold wire actually just measures the actual temperature of the air that's being rushed in through the mass airflow sensor, and it reports that to the computer. The hot wire is maintained by the PCM at 392 degrees. It's an exact temperature, because this is an exact measurement. It uses the voltage off that 12 volt wire and it keeps that wire at 392 degrees. Now it's important here to understand that the battery generates the voltage and sends that to the mass airflow. It has a ground, so the mass airflow internally is going to create this frequency. It's a pulse width modulated frequency and that is sent out on the signal wire and that is what we're going to be monitoring. Now frequency basically can be explained like this. It's on-off time. If we're going to flow current, we've got to turn it on and flow some current, and then we turn it off. The longer or the shorter the on-off time is what the creating of the frequency is, makes the frequency longer or shorter, and that's what we're measuring on the mass airflow. Now just like your weatherman will report to you a wind chill factor when it's windy and it's cold out, and that wind chill makes it feel colder, well, that's because air passing over something that's hot will cool it. That hot wire is going to cool then as air is rushed past it. The PCM then monitors that temperature, compares it to the actual temperature of the air, and it says we're not at 392 degrees, so it flows more current. Remember, volts don't create heat. Current does. So it flows more current over that wire to keep it at 392 degrees. Now this is all happening very, very, very fast, in milliseconds, maybe even microseconds. But because of that, it's actually generating a frequency then, and that's sending that out to the PCM to tell it how much current is needed to keep that wire at a certain temperature. That's what we're monitoring, is the signal wire. It is telling us the frequency, or how fast, how often it has to send current. The more you have anything powered on that is going to send current, the more heat it will send. If it's on for just a little blip of a second, it's not going to be much. If it's on for a little bit longer, it's going to be more heat. That's what we're measuring here, is the amount of current that's flowing, and it's going to be reported to us in a frequency. Frequencies are measured in what they call hertz. A frequency is a lot like if you have a radio and you're tuning that radio and you've got a particular station that you want to listen to, you can be tuning that dial and going to several different stations. If you want to hear the station that you want to hear, then it's a preset frequency. For example, in our area there's a very popular station that is 94.7. If you want to listen to that station, you've got to be right on 94.7. If you're off, you're going to be listening to something else. The mass airflow is very much like that. It generates a frequency. At, when you're driving at idle, or if you're driving at 2500 RPMs, it's going to have a different frequency, like a different station. Now the way the PCM works is it gets data from the MAP sensor, the intake air temperature sensor, the engine coolant temperature sensor, and the RPM. 
based off those things, it kind of anticipates how much air ought to be being sucked into the engine because at RPM, your throttle is going to be at different positions. So it puts out what it calls an anticipated value or frequency. Now the mass airflow then actually measures the amount of air that comes in through the intake. Now the PCM looks at this anticipated amount of air and it compares it to the actual. And if it's all in the same amount of frequency, if it's in the same range, everything's fine. The engine runs, the PCM can handle it, it can calculate and adjust fuel. But if the mass airflow sensor does not equal what the anticipated number is from the PCM, it turns on the check engine light and it sets code P0101. Now just like if you were tuning a radio and you wanted to listen to country music, you could recognize when you had a country music station. It would sound like country music. But if you happen to be easy listening, rock, or oldies, you'd know something's wrong. The PCM's a lot like that. It anticipates a particular range, which is called a frequency, that it's looking for. So it's like the PCM's looking for country music and it heard oldies, says something's wrong, it turns on the check engine light. So what we need to be looking at here is that frequency. Now the frequency actually can be measured and looked at different ways. We're going to show you that on the lab scope now.